Yeah, yeah. Okay. There's a lot of vodka science community up, baby. The Flint mm-hmm. Mayor, the Honorable Sheldon Neely, and um, views and opinion of the show are not those of the staff and management of Jeffrey DLC. The morning, Mayor, you are live on the air. Good morning, good morning. I'd like to welcome all the listeners from uh, WFLT. That's a great morning, another morning that God has smiled upon us That's uh, in listening uh, of this radio broadcast and as well being with one another. But definitely we want to make sure that we do all things uh, in accordance and thanking God uh, for this day. On the line with us, but uh, moreover, before we engage in prayer, I'm going to ask uh, for all families and uh, and like-minded people to pray for the family of Captain Colin Burney. Uh, we lost our uh, captain of the police force last night in a tragic uh, car crash. It was sudden, uh, but definitely want to keep his family lifted in prayer. This is a devastating loss for our uh, law enforcement uh, department. Uh, captain Burney was a great individual. I can personally say that because he was always dependable and he was always had done a fantastic job. And, and this is a devastating loss uh, for the city of Flint in law enforcement. So, Pastor Pettigrew, if you'd be so kind to lead us and guide us in the prayer. God bless you. Good morning to all of you. Kind Jesus, another day, we want to say thank you. Despite it all, we love you. We know you make no mistakes. We ask you to be with the Collins family, Captain Collins. Father, we ask you to strengthen his family. Father, you say that I would keep us in perfect peace if we just keep our minds stayed on you. We never know what each day is going to bring. We ask you to continue to bless the community update program. All of those that are playing active parts with the program, bless them and their families. Father, you say in the Bible, behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity, Psalms 133. So at this this program, Father, move forward. We ask you to be with us. Strengthen and keep us. And at the end of the day, we can look back and say thank you for another day. Be with the mayor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And today we we have a fantastic show uh, for you all. Um, we have some great information as it relates to our American Rescue Plan dollars and also we have our, our famous uh, guy who's helped us through the snow emergency, which was declared uh, this past Wednesday and Thursday of this week. Uh, we received about nine inches of snow. Uh, those uh, crews in our transportation department, those hardworking men and women uh, cleared the snow. Uh, fabulous manner. Uh, they did a great job uh, as it relates to uh, making sure that we can get to and from our locations safely. But before that, we still have a deadly virus uh, amongst us, COVID-19 and the variants. But we have Dr. Fur holding with us today to talk about uh, the numbers and what we need to do. And we all need to do it just a little bit more. Dr. Fur holding. Uh, hi, good morning, uh, Mayor Mealy, and uh, thanks for having me. It is Black History Month. So I just want to give a shout out and I you know, remind people we do all the great work that we do because our future history makers are among us. And I don't want them getting sick. I don't want them, you know, uh, not knowing their worth. Um, so I'm just happy to be here today to uplift some good news and share about what's happening. We are on our fourth consecutive week of decline in the city of Flint for COVID. You know, we have this great COVID task force. The city of Flint is very vibrant and active in their task force. So thank you, Mayor Neely, for your ongoing participation. And as you can see here, the numbers are going down four consecutive weeks. We actually, the rates dropped by more than half last week. They dropped by more than half. So it's working. And then I say, God bless us with these nine inches of snow because guess what? Sometimes you need God to intervene and tell people to stay put. So I think next week we might see some continued progress because people have been moving around a lot less. On the upside, our babies are going back to school. The rates have dropped. Uh, community schools feel good about sending them back. So I just encourage people, please, please, please stay the course. Things are moving in the right direction. Even in the face of this very infectious variant, we are doing good. Things are moving in the right direction. Four weeks. The city of Flint has actually gone up in our ranking. So what that means is last month in December, we ranked 13 out of all the municipalities in Genesee County. This month, we rank Six. It's not a big cause of concern. But what it is, is our case rate for January was moving a little bit faster than some of the other places. Almost every municipality rate doubled in Genesee County, and Flint was no exception. But again, for this current month, 
we are moving in the right direction. So I just want to encourage people that stay that course. We've got all kinds of great resources to support people. You can see we've got vaccines available. We've got upcoming clinics. I will paste this into the chat on the Facebook Live so people can see them. But on Tuesday, you can go to Our Lady of Guadalupe. On Wednesday, you can go to Central Church of the Nazarene. And on Thursday, you can go to Shiloh Missionary Baptist Church. They offer some different combination of Moderna or Pfizer vaccine. But please, please, please use the great resources that we have available. Remember, testing remains a very important tool for us. We've got testing at those three community sites, Word of Life, Bethel United Methodist Church, Church, and Macedonia Baptist Church, as well as Walgreens, Hamilton Community Health Network, and Rite Aid. If you have been exposed, somebody knows you've been exposed, you have any symptoms, please, please, please go and get tested. And then big shout out to the city of Flint and our Flint TV for getting this combined free COVID-19 vaccination and testing clinic set up at the Flint Police many stations. I'm so proud of you, Mayor Neely, and the work that you all did to do this. You said you do it. You said you get the many stations active. You said you get this resource for us, and you delivered, and I'm grateful. So we got Hasselbring Senior Center. We got North Flint Mini Station and the South Flint Dort Mall Mini Station. People have no excuse. If your test is negative, get vaccinated. Get your vaccine and then continue to utilize that good testing. And then the last thing I want to say is, I know people have had a lot of concern because they say, all oh, these things aren't even FDA approved yet. The Pfizer vaccine was fully FDA approved a couple months ago, and now Moderna's vaccine, which is called Spikevac, has also received full FDA approval. So there's no excuse. It has met the highest standards for FDA approval, and that vaccine, along with the Pfizer vaccine, is available at all of these great sites throughout the city. Thank you, Mayor. Well, you know, thank you for all the activity that you've been engaging in around making sure residents are safe in this community and not only in this community, but in the state of Michigan by providing the good uh, information, science and medical advice. But we all must do more. We must do more because we say that, you know, wear your mask, wash your hands, maintain social distancing, but we all must do more. Get your vaccination, get your booster and get tested. We're making ourselves available uh, to do that personally. I've been uh, vaccinated and gotten my booster, but we cannot sit idly by while more American citizens lose their lives. We eclipse the fact that uh, 900 citizens have lost their lives to this deadly virus or its variances. We must do more. We've been doing better, as Dr. Furholt has said. Our, our case rates are going down, but that's no time to let down our guard. We must put on a full court press and continue to push forward. That's why these many stations are available and active. We must all do more. Uh, with that in mind about doing more, uh, we had a snow emergency this week. Uh, nine inches of, or more snow hit our area. Uh, sometimes that's a paralyzing effect. Uh, on our communities, unless you are prepared, ready to go, and you have active in individuals with the mindset to get the job done. Leading that effort for the city of Flint is John Daly, our transportation director. He and his crews uh, projected uh, with, with the help of meteorologists uh, that the snow was gonna fall. Recommending to me that we declare a snow emergency before the first snowflake fall. When it started to well, fall, it was, it was devastating to some other communities, but we were able to move snow and move it very fast. John Daly, you're on the line and, and thank you uh, for the work that you do. And please thank your crews uh, for doing a fantastic job for the city of Flint. Thank you, Mayor. Now, John, can you describe a little bit to our listening audience because people want to know how we remove snow inside the city of Flint. And because snowfalls like we had this past week usually were paralyzed, this, you know, in the past it paralyzed the city of Flint for more than a week to up to two weeks. Uh, causing uh, congestion all over uh, our community. But but right now, uh, can you describe how we remove snow and what the, what the priorities are? Well, the first thing we do is, yeah, as you know, we changed the snow plan this year and we added a fourth crew uh, that would increase our response time. And that, that was a key factor in this was the addition, was I believe the addition of that uh, fourth crew. The second thing is that 
wanted to be uh, in front of this, wanted to be proactive rather than reactive in the snowfall. And the idea there is to take a look at the weather reports that are coming in, make our best evaluation about what the snow is going to uh, do and where it's going to fall in, in terms of amounts, and then place the uh, response team, the crew, the cleanup crews, uh, accordingly. And we actually started work on preparing for the snowfall on Monday before this, uh, this week, Monday evening. And the first thing we did was, as a preventative measure, we put down a snow a salt sand mix on uh, bridge decks, major intersections, and places where we know that in the, from past history there have been icing problems. And <clears throat> salt is a <clears throat> interesting device. It works, but it only works within a range of temperature. From about 30 uh, 40 degrees to down to about 25 degrees Fahrenheit. As far as the actual pavement temperature, that is the range in which salt works. It, uh, it simply, outside of that temperature range, it doesn't work. So if the temperature drops into single digits, like it did on uh, Tuesday night, then you, your salt won't work. Uh, so you have to be preemptive and get that out there as a preventative measure. And that's what the crews did. And they worked the average uh, equipment operator over the last uh, week has worked a little over 16 and a half hours a day. And they're actually out there today uh, finishing up some uh, snow removal along the sides of uh, major streets where we just cleared the lane and now we're moving it out to actually into the uh, right of way. So it was a great response not only by the operators that were driving the trucks, but also by the mechanics that kept the vehicles up for us because we went into surge mode on uh, Tuesday, actually on Tuesday uh, at about 1 a.m. And that surge mode means we bring everything we've got, we're throwing everything we have at it. And we, at one point we had uh, 13 trucks out. And as you know, the city of uh, Flint Street System, it's a little over 500 miles of uh, roads. And we aggressively attacked that. We wanted to get to the residentials as soon as we could. One of the, one of the things that was a game changer for us is, was that on Wednesday, we got additional, we cleared, on Tuesday, we cleared the, uh, most of the major streets. And then on Tuesday, on Wednesday, we got additional snowfall. So instead of going into the residentials as early as we got the majors again of the snow that had fallen since we cleaned it earlier. And so that was, that caused about a, a 13 to 14 hour delay. But we're still working out there and we will work to, uh, all of today to clear this up. I want to thank the residents of the city of Flint for cooperating with us that the first thing they did was I only saw four or five instances where automobiles were parked in the roadway during the snow emergency. That made us safe. That enabled us to get and move faster uh, in removing the snow and ice. When we got down to the scraping operations where we're actually scraping the ice off the road, uh, that's that made it go so much faster. And so I want to appreciate the help that the residents did with that and also with using 911 as the way to, if they felt, particularly on Thursday and Friday, this week, I'm sorry, on Thursday, if, to use 911 as a vehicle to get complaints to us rather than passing them through uh, non conventional pathway, communication pathways. That worked extremely well. So. Again, kudos to the residents of the city of Flint that supported us and understood what was going on and realized that uh, it would take some time for us to clear the snow and then cooperated with us by making sure their vehicles were removed. And it's, a, it's really, I just want to point out, it is a team effort in removing the snow and ice. That the, the equipment operators are out there. You see them in the trucks. They wouldn't be there. The, Equipment wouldn't be available for them unless the mechanics had worked on it in advance and had that and also fixed anything that broke. Uh, 
the preparation for this by myself and the supervisors was again a team effort where all of us contributed what we knew about snow and how to prepare for this type of event. And it, just to give you an idea about the scope of this, this made the top, as I understand it, this made the top snow events, top 25 snow events of the past century. So right. it's, it's certainly not up there as number one, but it's a, it was a significant snowfall and one of the most significant that I've seen in the 20 years that I've been in Genesee County. Yeah, you know, one thing about it, John, when we talk about a team effort, you know, when we declare a snow emergency, what that means, ladies and gentlemen out there, we declare a snow emergency in order to be able to expedite the way that we clean the streets. Snow emergency means that you have to move your cars off the street so our snow plows can get up and down the street effectively to be able to clear those roadways. Now, one thing that John talked about is a little bit about the science of it. When we have uh, freezing temperature or below freezing temperature, ice uh, or the salt, uh, does not really impact uh, the ice like we want it. That's why he said we have a, a salt and sand mix in order for you to be able to have a little traction and also to have that salt available when the, when the temperatures do rise so the ice can be uh, moved. He talked about these things. And so John and his team and his crews, uh, under his leadership, you know, not only uh, has been doing a fantastic job in the winter, but also the street sweeping and the cleaning of streets, which we hadn't seen in many years inside the city of Flint is under his watch. Now, Dr. John Daly, our transportation director, is devising a new program that he just brought to me uh, this past week about the sidewalk replacement. Uh, uh, replacing sidewalks inside the city of Flint that's been cracked or damaged uh, through tree roots or any other particular thing. And he's devised a way to make it the burden a little bit easier uh, on residents because we we, uh, we found that we had a, some additional dollars uh, that was owed to us by the state of Michigan. And John has said, well, let's apply that to the benefit of the residents by replacing sidewalks. We'll be announcing that program in two weeks, uh, how we can start now to uh, sign up to get your sidewalks replaced uh, at, at very little expense to the resident themselves. But definitely under Dr. John Daly, we have be benefited from our summertime activity for street cleaning, uh, street repair. And now uh, we see his uh, the way that he can lead his team in the snow removal. So thank you, John Daly. And Sister D from WFLT told me to, to tell you uh, it was a fantastic way that uh, they kept plowing the streets. They, she said she had to send her husband outside at least twice to uh, dig out the driveway after the plows came down the street. So one last thing I would comment on, Major uh, Mayor, and that's that I want to uh, publicly uh, thank you for declaring the snow emergency as you, as early as you did. That was a decision that you made that was a key factor in us being able to have a quicker and better response time than we've had in previous operations. So again, thank you for that. Well, thank you. And now we move on to what we call our American Rescue Plan dollars. Our President Joe Biden and the legislators in Washington, D.C., through their high-minded legislative activity, placed $1.9 trillion to the aid of America's citizens all throughout our country. The city of Flint was a benefactor of $94 million. I'm going to repeat that figure because a lot of misinformation gets out there. And one of the things that's very toxic to a community is bad information, those that would try to... Uh, mislead you. $94 million has hit uh, the city of Flint for the benefit of it. These dollars were primarily uh, dispatched to cover the losses, loss in revenues in the pandemic year, meaning that if you lost revenues, we have to backfill these things. So uh, budgets and, and different municipal budgets and state budgets would not uh, fold. Uh, and these dollars were to backfill those things. Also, some transformational opportunities are available with these dollars uh, to be able to move forward. But as I guarantee, and I double down on my guarantee, that we'll be able to track every dollar from its inception to its expiration. One of the things about dollars that coming through the city of Flint, we was hard pressed to find out where those dollars went and how the activity uh, happened that made those dollars evaporate. No longer would that ever happen, not under my watch. These dollars will be tracked. One of the companies that we have brought forth for the compliance and oversight to make sure that we're in compliance uh, with the federal government for their rule set, 400 plus pages of rules uh, comes along with these dollars. Uh, the company that we hired was ENY, and uh, today we have Bryant from that company. I'm not going to pronounce your last name because I might mess it up, Bryant, but, but definitely we want to talk about the activity. We'll be going out to our community with four meetings, official city meetings, 
uh, to talk about this, to co uh, uh, collect more input from residents. We've been doing so for the last four months. We've come up with five buckets uh, and we understand what the priorities are in our community, but we're gonna have one more round uh, just to make sure that we collect the information from the residents of this community. February 17th at Mott Community College in the Technology Center, and then it will be advertisements. Uh, every week we'll be coming back to a different sector of our city. And so uh, if you can't make one, you can make one or the other uh, subsequently uh, because there will be four uh, total meetings as we move throughout our city. Now, making sure we do, the, do it correctly, uh, Brian and ENY will be there to be able to help describe uh, what these dollars are uh, and how we are gonna be uh, talking about the, the collecting the input from the residents. Brian, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> Excuse me, thank you very much. Uh, yes, absolutely. You know, we look forward to the partnership with the city. Our role as consultants to the city with regard to this funding is very much designed about protecting these funds making sure that when folks like the United States Treasury or others, auditors and so forth come in, we can account for every dollar that's spent. And as you know, with these dollars, the funding is, is very much tied to uh, certain expenditure categories, certain levels of spend that require documentation and reporting back to Treasury because what they're doing, because so much money has gone out to the, um, across the country in this situation, in this case, with these funds, which are slightly different than the funding that was received perhaps a year or so ago, that was more of just uh, CARES money, this money is very much tied to the federal rules around how the dollars can be used and the way that they're reported. So our, our role is to help you gather that input, gather the input from the citizens, and take that, look for the eligible piece of how we can spend that funding, and then put in place a process that allows for an efficient an effective manner to to basically record the use of those funds to make sure that if anybody asks a question at any point we have the documentation to support the expenditure that happened so it's it's really um you know there's quite a bit to this i will tell you uh, mr mayor that like many cities flint is, is in a position of receiving what some would call generational funding and so this puts a uh, you know gives you a great opportunity to use these funds whether it be to replenish certain government services, uh, have a, a look at your, your budget overall, but also to assist citizens and assist those that have been impacted negatively uh, through the use of these funds by the insertion of programs, you know, small business assistance and things like that. Yeah, and Brian, you know, just to clear up some of the misnomer about these dollars and cents so people won't be confused about it, because, you know, one of the things that this administration has been battling against is the, the, the willful nature of those that will mislead community members, which causes damage. And it's just unfortunate that that happens. But the city of Flint has a structural deficit. What that means is that we have a deficit built into, it's built into the system because we only collect about $56 million dollars and we spend about $72 million for our current operations as we know it. So the structural deficit is in large part because of our pension system. The pension obligation that we have to pay about 20 plus million dollars every year. That's, that was the cost when I first came into office. That has now ballooned to more than $30 million and, and could double to $40 million in the years of 2024. So we have a structural deficit built in because of our obligations to that unfunded liability. These dollars, Brian, uh, cannot be used to, the, the, to pay toward our structural deficit. That is one of the rules. And when um, people are, uh, give the, the illusion that these dollars say that some type of way that the city of Flint is out of danger financially, um, that's not the case. Am I, am I correct in my uh, summary of it? Yes, yes, that's correct, Mr. Mayor. The, the funding and the rules that Treasury has set out under their interim and final rule are very clear. You know, take care of certain liabilities such as debt, uh, pension liabilities, and so forth. It does give you some opportunity to assist in other portions of the budget, of course, but uh, long-term liabilities such as these, you know, when you think about what the American Rescue Plan is designed to do, it's to bring recovery back. It's to bring assistance to households, to citizens, to cities, to rebuild and, and recover from the pandemic. Uh, so they took out the opportunity to use this for the, the more long-term type uh, 
liabilities that may may be sitting on city balance sheets. Right. And some of the things that we've been doing in this administration, we've been pushing back against the what I call the passive corruption, uh, because the individuals in the past would use these dollars or dollars and cents in the past and they were, they were passively corrupt and, and reroute these dollars into places that they should not go. These dollars will not miss their mark. And their mark is that the, uh, the go for the benefit of the residents inside this community. They will not miss their mark. The county received $77 million of the American Rescue Plan dollars. By my calculation, one out of every $5 belongs to the residents of the city of Flint. These dollars just do not, do not go to the out county area. Flint is a part of Genesee County. We have the largest population as a, a, a municipal government inside of Genesee County. One out of every $5 of that $77 million should go for the benefit of Flint residents. Those of, of, those of us of like thinking should understand that and those dollars should be returned to the benefit of Flint residents. But not only this, this is not only our opportunity. Uh, our resilience co coordinator, Lottie Ferguson, has been uh, untangling the web that was cast uh, when we first came into office about all the grants that we have and receive inside the city of Flint. We receive about 80 grants. Uh, that we're the fiduciaries of to be able to be dispatched for the benefit of residents. I'm going to turn back the page to go back to Dr. Furholden because under Lottie Ferguson's watch, one of our team members rewrote the grant for recast, uh, extending out another five additional million dollars uh, for activities. And that grant period is now open until next Monday. Dr. Furholden, can you talk about the recast dollars? Yeah, recast is it's nothing short of a miracle. I'm, I'm glad that you shouted out Lottie Ferguson because um, we were uh, one of very few sites who got refunded for this initiative. Um, I think our partners uh, at the CDC recognized just how good we've been and a good steward of these dollars um, under you and Lottie's leadership. So there are many grant programs that now open. Flint Recast stands for Resilience in Communities After Stress and Trauma. They are offering many grants to community-based organizations ranging in value from five to $25,000. It is a very fair vetting process. Community members and your peers will review those applications. The application purposely is streamlined and very simple. The deadline is Monday, February 14th at 1 p.m. We have community organizations that are youth serving organizations to empower and help build up your community program uh, to empower you and our residents with trauma-informed skills and systems of care. Right, and we will continue to provide grants. Uh, many grants uh, were provided last year uh, for with the recast dollars, crime watches, uh, different neighborhood activities uh, were funded by these uh, dollars. And so we want to make sure while the application process is open that you do apply uh, to the city of Flint. Also, the input section uh, for the re uh, not only recast, but also to talk about our dollars from the American Rescue Plan, uh, February 17th, Mott Community College and the, Tech the Technological Center uh, will be there. That'll be the first uh, of four meetings uh, with the community to be able to have a level of input. Definitely, we want to make sure that we have uh, your input. Uh, you can go to the City of Flint website as well. Uh, we have a, still our survey monkeys. It's been for the last seven months uh, to be able to collect your input, uh, talking about how we can improve the quality of life inside the city of Flint. We're also working through our plan for the old St. John neighborhood. Our first drafts are up. We'll be putting that up on our website to talk about how we're going to continue to uh, rebuild Flint's oldest African-American neighborhood that was deconstructed when the I-475 project came through with intimate domain. But definitely we want to send uh, more uh, another shout out to the uh, Captain Colin Bernie's family. Uh, we will miss you. Uh, also, as I always ended my show for the last nine years, I always told my mother I loved her at the end of every broadcast. She may not lo no longer be here on this side uh, with us, but she's still uh, in my heart, my mind, always. And I love you, Mom. Thank you, John Daly and your team for doing the great work that you're doing. And no doubt about it. We're doing a fantastic job in this city. We need more like minded individuals to come along and move us forward. Uh, passive corruption no longer exists uh, as it relates to the way that we implement our services inside the city of Flint. Residents come first, second, and third, no doubt about it. And we will stand strong against anything that's nefariously put in place to try to pick the pockets of the poor. Uh, with you, uh, always, thank you guys for joining us. God bless. Back to you, Sister D.
All right. Thanks, Mayor. Have a great weekend. God bless. Yep. I 